What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. This is the third and final video in a quick series I'm doing where I actually go over a practice exam that I'm having my students do in preparation for a final exam that I'm making that'll be just like the practice exam. So let's start with the Volnor word problems. And first, what does Volnor mean? Well, Volnor is a way that is a framework that I came up with for solving a certain type of equation where you have a variable on both sides. It stands for variables on left, numbers on right. And that's the general way you want to solve these. We'll end up using this when we actually deal with the particular word problems. So speaking of which, let's go ahead and start that. First word problem says, if I order a Switch and games from Walmart, the system is $300 and games are $60 each. Okay, that word each is important, I'll underline it. If I order from Amazon, the system is $350 and games are $50 each. There's that word each again. How many games would I have to order to spend the same amount at either store? So whatever you've heard about Amazon and Walmart, their prices are generally relatively consistent, but I think I made the um, switch price up for Amazon. Um, essentially, we're actually going to split this problem up into two pieces of our equation. We have Walmart, and then we have Amazon. So I'll go ahead and split that up. We have two different stores, so we'll be comparing those using this Volnor problem. And it's, um, it's asking how many games would I have to order to spend the same amount at either store. So if I see the word how many, this thing that's right next to it is probably going to end up being my variable. So I'll go ahead and call it G. So now I need to go ahead and look in the rest of the problem for information on how much games cost. So right here we have games that are $60 each. And then if the system is $300, that doesn't depend on how many games I buy. So if I go ahead and set up the left half of this equation representing Walmart, that would be $60 per game plus $300 for the system. So that's Walmart. If I go to Amazon, I see that my games are $50 each. So that's going to translate to $50 for each game, 50G. And then the system is $350 question is, how many games do I have to order to spend the same amount at either store? Since I made G games my variable, we can go ahead and use Volnor to solve this, and it'll give us the answer that we're looking for. So if I have a look at all this information, and I have a look at Volnor, first thing it says is variables on left. I see G on the left side, but I also see it on the right side. I want to get rid of it if it's on the right side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 50G subtract 50g. 50g minus 50g is going to cancel. 60g minus 50g. Well, $60 minus $50 would just get me $10. So 60g minus 50g would get me 10g. This basically represents the difference in price per game between Walmart and Amazon. Now let's deal with the second piece of Volnor, numbers on right. I have a number on the right. I have 350. I also have this 300 on the left, and I don't like that. So I'm going to subtract 300, subtract 300. 300 minus 300 will cancel, and 350 minus 300 will give me 50. So we have the difference in the cost per game and the difference in the cost of the system. So now that I know that the difference in the cost of games is $10 and the difference in the cost of the system is $50, I can go ahead and actually figure all this out by just treating this like a one-step equation. So I'll go ahead and rewrite all this over here. 10 times however many games equals 50. So 10 times what equals 50? Well, whether you use your calculator or whether you use the math facts that you know, you should be able to get an answer of 5. So you would have to buy 5 games in order to spend the same amount at Walmart that you would at Amazon if you're buying a Switch. So let's move on to this next one. My students know that I like fruit cups, so I made up a problem about fruit cups. If I buy fruit cups from a grocery store, I'll pay $2 each, but I can use a coupon for $5 off my purchase. And if I buy fruit cups online, they're $1.50 each, but I'll have to pay $3 in shipping. How many fruit cups will I need to buy in order to spend the same amount in store and online? So once again, I am just looking at this information. First thing I see is how many fruit cups. Since I see how many, this thing right here, f, is going to end up being my variable, f. And then I look other places in the problem, and I see that if I'm look 
if I'm dealing with a grocery store, I'll pay $2 each, $2 per fruit cup, but I can use a coupon for $5 off my purchase. So that $2 each tells me that if I'm looking at a grocery store, it'll be 2F. But if I use a coupon for $5 off my purchase, I'm thinking of money as a positive quantity right now, even though I'm spending it so it's going out of my bank account. So if I use a coupon, that's going to take $5 off my purchase, giving me this first expression, 2F minus 5. If I buy them online, they're $1.50 each, and I'm going to have to pay $3 in shipping, which means that if I buy online, $1.50 each is going to translate to $1.5 or $1.50 for each fruit cup or pack of fruit cups. And then if I have to pay an extra $3 in shipping, that's going to be plus 3. So this was the hard part, setting up this equation. Now we're just going to go ahead and use Volnar. I have a variable on the left and a variable on the right, so I want to get rid of this 1.5F. That cancels, and 2F minus 1.5F is like $2 minus $1.50, which is going to leave me with 50 cents per fruit cup. And once again, this just represents the difference in the price of the fruit cups. And over here, if I want to get all my numbers on the right, I have plus 3, but I also have this minus 5 that I want to get rid of. So in order to undo minus, in order to undo subtraction, I just need to add. So that's plus 5, plus 5, minus 5 and plus 5 are going to cancel. Plus 3 and plus 5 are just going to give me 8. Now after all this, once again, I have just a regular old one-step equation left. I have 0.5F and I have 8. So I know that 0.5 times something equals 8, and it's not going to be quite as easy as times tables this time. I'll need to divide by 0.5, divide by 0.5. These will cancel, and according to my calculator, 8 divided by 0.5 will give me 16. If we think of these as halves, 16 halves can fit into 8, so this makes sense. Either way, I need to buy 16 fruit cups or packs of fruit cups in order to be paying the same amount total in either place. So if I come down, or so that's the vulnerable word problems piece. If I come down to systems, I have two different types of problems here. First problem I have is a substitution problem. So this is going to be the problem where I start by looking at my two equations where I have y and x. I'm trying to figure out both at the same time. First thing I need to do is see if I have x or y by itself. Thankfully, I have y by itself up here, so that takes away some of the work from me. So after that, I move on to step two, where I substitute for y. So in other words, instead of y, in this next equation, I'm going to write everything that was equal to y in the other one. So I'm going to sub for y to find x. So essentially, this will be 4x plus y, but and I'll still write equals 7. But instead of y, I need to write all of this junk up here. So instead of 4x plus y, it'll be 4x plus 8x minus 5. So I think at this point we can see that we have y represented down here. I just wrote 8x plus 5 in place of it. So now I need to go ahead and combine my like terms. Since I have 4x plus 8x, that's going to give me a total of 12x. and I still have my minus 5 equals 7. And at this point, I have another regular old two-step equation that I need to deal with. So instead of minus 5, I'll do plus 5 to cancel that. Minus 5 and plus 5 cancel. 7 plus 5 equals 12. Here I have 12x, which I left alone, equals 12. Now 12 times what equals 12? That's just going to give me an answer of 1. But I'm not quite done. Even though I found x, I need to do step 3. I need to pick one of these equations and sub for x in order to find y. I'll go ahead and pick this bottom one. So this will be 4 times x plus y equals 7. x was 1, so I'll go ahead and plug that in. Instead of 4x, this will be 4 times x, which is 4 times 1. 4 times 1 is just 4. So now I need to figure out 4 plus what equals 7. 
Well, 4 plus 3 actually is going to equal 7. And I can do that just thinking about it in terms of fact families or as a fill-in-the-blank problem or anything like that. But I should get an answer of 3 for y, which means that if I'm going to write my final answer, my x is 1, my y is 3. And for my students, this is how I'm going to expect you to write your final answer. Once you've found your x and once you've found your y, you'll need to take both those numbers and put them into an ordered pair where x comes first and y comes second. So that was the substitution problem. Now over here, we have a word problem. And we see, for instance, I have nickels and dimes in my hand, I have eight coins total, and I have 60 cents. How many nickels and dimes do I have? Well, first let's go ahead and write down that a nickel is five cents and a dime is 10 cents. So I'm looking for some amount of coins, eight coins total between nickels and dimes, where I have 60 cents total. So I'm gonna go ahead and try out two wrong answers just to motivate what a right answer would be. So for instance, for a wrong answer, if I have seven nickels and one dime, seven nickels would be a total of 35 cents from seven times five. One dime would be 10 cents because that's just one times 10. 45 cents is not what I'm looking for. These amounts of coins add up to eight coins. I would have eight coins total, but they would not total 60 cents. So that is not a correct answer. Uh, to try another one, let's say I had five dimes and two nickels. Five dimes, five times 10 would be 50 cents. Two nickels, two times five would be 10 cents. So I would have 60 cents total. Only thing is, this is not the right number of coins. I would have seven coins that gave me 60 cents instead of eight coins. Now what's the actual answer? And I will pause for a minute and just say that I hate to um, have to do this like this, just in terms of trial and error, because there is a more systematic way to do it, but I do think that'll be easier for my students. The correct answer is actually four of each. Four dimes, get me 40 cents. Four nickels, get me 20 cents. This combination gets me eight coins and 60 cents. And this is the only combination of coins that will actually do this. So that is the essence of what this trial and error problem is like. So now let's move on to the very last section on range, mode, median, and mean. I have a set of numbers and I need to find the range, the mode, the median, and the mean. The range involves just a little bit of math. I have to find my biggest number and subtract from it my smallest number. My biggest number is 15. My smallest number is going to be 5. So biggest minus smallest is going to get me 15 minus 5. So my range of these numbers is just going to be 10. My mode is actually even easier. It's the number that just shows up the largest number of times. So if I'm looking at this set of numbers, 7 shows up once, 8 shows up once, 6 shows up once, 9 shows up twice, 15, 5, and 13 show up once each. So my mode is just going to be 9. Down here, my median is going to be the one that's right in the middle once I've ordered them all from smallest to biggest. So I'm going to start by actually going ahead and ordering these. That would be 5, 6, 7, 8, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9. I have to count my 9 twice, 13, and 15. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight numbers. I'll use what I call the cross out trick. Where I cross out from the bottom and the top, bottom and the top, bottom and the top. What I'm left with is two numbers in the middle here. This is where it gets a bit tricky. What I have to do is find eight plus nine and divide it by two. So this would give me 17 divided by two which is eight and a half, right between eight and nine. So you can think of it as the average or you can think of it as whatever number is right in the middle there. So the mean is the last one and the mean is probably the one that involves the most math. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add up all my numbers. Seven plus eight plus six plus nine plus nine plus 15 plus five plus 13. Once I add all these up, I just need to divide by how many numbers there are. So there were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight numbers. So I divide by eight, and 72 divided by eight is gonna give me a final answer of nine. 